Hello everyone and welcome back to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and today we're going to start our commissioned playthrough. So don't forget, we're trying to spread the church across the entire board within the 21-ish rounds that we have. Are you ready? Let's get going. On each player board, there is an order of play, which is really nice to have. I like how everybody has that right in front of them. It makes it simple. So the first thing that we do is we do the arm phase. That just says draw six cards or five if you're playing a four or five player game. We already did that. We did that at the end of the last video. So now we do the live uh, phase. In the live phase, there's all these different phases. Trial, pray, share, move, and grow. We will do all of this two times and then go to the mature phase. So let's start with the trial phase, and that is draw and apply one trial card. What we do is we draw the top trial card, place it here in the discard pile, and we read what it says, drought. This states that we'd have to lose one church member or one missionary in every church in the region. <gasps> that is a great time to have that show up because we only have one church right now, and that's in Jerusalem. So in Jerusalem, all we have to do is lose one church member. I am definitely not going to lose a missionary. All we have to do is take one of these cubes and move it back to the supply. We did this in Jerusalem because as Paul is our elder apostle, he has the first player token, He everything that happens in the trial cards happens in the location where he's at. So if he and James were in two different regions, then when we draw trial cards, they're only going to affect the region of the individual that has the elder staff. So after completing the trial phase, we now do the prey phase. Now, this is where co-op is much better than solo because what you do normally during the prey phase is you quietly, without talking to anybody, play two faith cards face down on your board. They're placed right here like so. Face down, nobody can see what you're playing and you can't discuss what you're going to play. Then after that, we'll move to the share and we'll flip these over and reveal them to everybody. And then we can talk about them depending upon what we would roll on this messenger die. And if I rolled a one, that wouldn't be good. We wouldn't be able to talk. But let's go ahead and try and decide which two faith cards for both Paul and James we want to pray with. Here we have the hands of both James and Paul. Now, like I said, normally when you're playing this cooperatively, you don't get to work together on which cards to play, and that's some of the fun part about the game. You've got to decide, oh, I know James has these cards in his hand or in his deck. Does he have them in his hand, and is he going to play them? If he is, then I don't want to play my good ones, and then we have too many good cards out at one time because what's going to happen during the share phase is we get to only apply two of the four faith cards that we're going to play. What I did here is all of the ones that are identical, I just um, lumped them together. So Paul has five of his basic cards and James has four of his basic cards, but they all look the same as what's here. So this would allow us to gain an additional move action, and you'll see how moves work. That's actually really nice, especially at the beginning. Paul allows us to remove um, one of these missionary stops, but we don't have any of those on the board, so it's somewhat useless. These three cards, they can be used for a couple different things. On the top, they can either be used to remove a, a growth stop, which is used to prevent churches from growing, and you can remove those with this card, which is great. Or on the bottom, you can use it, and what you do is you give the card up, and you put it at the bottom of the board, and you count this as one of the nine books of the New Testament. If you have the nine books of the New Testament, that's one of the requirements for winning. So when we play this card, if we pray this one, and then we choose it, we can either choose it for its top action or its bottom action. So I'm personally thinking that James might just take two of his move cards and play those for his praying. And Paul is going to take two of his missionary stops and pray with those as well. So what you do is you place those cards face down on your board like so. When playing cooperatively, you all do this at the same time, so simultaneously you'll pick the cards that you want to pray for. After everybody has prayed, then, since we're playing with the messenger die, we have to give it a roll. Let's see what we roll. We rolled a three. If we look at the chart here, rolling a three means the messages were lost. No talking during the share, move, or grow actions. 
For solo, that's not going to have any effect because we already have planned together. We're playing as two characters on our own. But you can see how playing cooperatively, now that means only the player that is holding that Elder uh, elder Apostle token is the one that can make the choices. No one else can say anything. It really helps eliminate the Alpha player, which is cool. For us, though, not really going to matter. It'll matter for us if we roll a 2 or a one because we start placing mission stops grow stops or even losing church members now that we've done the prey action we all would flip up our cards face up here and then paul whatever player is paul paul gets to decide which of the four cards that are available to us which two does he want to use that's during the share phase I personally feel like it makes the most sense to use both of James' cards because if you think about it, Paul's are totally useless. There's no missionary stops right now. So let's do two moves. In this game, there are two different types of moves. There's a fellowship move and a mission move. Let's first show a mission move since that's what we're going to do first. A mission move, you have to have in the location that you are at at least four or more in population. In population, you just count all of the cubes. So we have five cubes. You count all the missionaries. We've got four missionaries. And you count all the apostles. And we've got two apostles. So if we put all of that together, it's definitely more than four. So then what we can do is we have to take either one of the missionaries or one of the apostles and you can pick any of them even though i'm paul i don't have to move paul i can move anybody that's on the board which is really nice it allows you you, you are an apostle you're somewhere on the board but you also can move other people so i have to take either a missionary or an apostle and move them to a new location. And it's essentially bringing the church to that next location. Now, I can take with them any of the other church members that are there, including other apostles or other missionaries. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to move one missionary here with two church members. And there's a reason I'm doing that, and I'll explain that in a little bit. But that is a missionary move. We have now created a new church in Jericho. The other type of move that we can make is called a fellowship move. And as long as I have a developed church in two different regions, I can, for one move, move as many of either the church members, missionaries, or apostles in between the two locations. So I can move these two apostles over here for the second move. Now you might go, well, why didn't I do that initially the last time? Yeah, and that's why I don't want to actually do that. <laughs> but that would be something that you can do. Now, the reason I wanted to make sure I had three in Jericho over here is because as long as the population in the, uh, a location is three or more, at the end of the round, we're going to be able to grow that church and we place another church member there. And remember, you need to have a population of four in order to do that mission move. So right now in Jericho, we could not do a mission move. We don't have sufficient population. But at the end of this round, we're going to grow that church, and that, grow, that church will have four population, and that means that we can do a mission move next time. We have a second move option, so what I'm going to do is take both apostles over here, and let's take these, ah, just one church member, and all of these missionaries, except for this one, let's leave that one here, and move over to Caseria. So now we have applied both of our faith cards. We have done two of our moves. After this, we move to the move phase. We move to the move. That's awesome. Uh, we get to do two fellowship or mission moves. And we can do two fellowship, two mission, one fellowship, one mission. We can do no movements. We always are allowed to do two move actions before we move into the grow phase. I certainly could do another missionary move out of this location, but that's actually it. Because if you look at it, I only have three population and three population there. I have one, two, three, four, five population in Caesarea. So I think what I'm going to do is do a mission move from here. And let's move these three to the boats. Then we get to do a second move, and we're going to move these two all the way over to Crete. Why I wanted to do this is because now our apostles are in two different regions. You see how this is green and this is blue? So if ever something happens in a region, it doesn't happen where both of the apostles are in the same region and we can have like double whammies hit us. So I like having them in different locations. Now I'm going to have to circle back over here to Alexandria and Gaza, and then I have to get over here to Cyprus. So yeah, I've got a lot of movement I still need to do, but I like having them in two different regions. 
we can now move into that grow phase. And so I'm going to have, and this is something that's also strategic, you don't have to grow a church that's three or more in population because this is limited. If ever we run out of white cubes, that means we can't place any more on the board. So you don't want to grow certain churches that have no place to grow, right? But right now, at the beginning, we definitely want all of our churches that can grow to grow. So that would be all three of these. We have now completed the live action once. We do this two times. We don't draw new cards. We now only have four cards in our hand. And so now what we're going to do is draw and apply one trial card. And then again, out of those four cards, play two of them face down on our boards. I should also mention that now James is the elder apostle. And so everything that's going to happen is going to happen in the green region from the trial cards and from our cards that we pray. We'll draw our next card, and we have Nero's Rage. This says we lose one church member or one missionary meeple two times in every region. And yes, this is a hard card. Ow. <laughs> two times in every region. Normally, the trial cards only affect the region that the apostle is in, but the hard cards sometimes affect every region. And right now, this stinks because Paul is now going to lose both of these on, in Crete. He no longer can grow his church until he gets another church member here. In James' region, we're going to lose two from Jerusalem. So if you think about it, kind of thematically, what happened is we tried to spread our church and we spread it too thin. And when Nero's rage came, we lost a lot of our support in Jerusalem. Ow. Moving into the prey phase, we get to decide two cards for each James and Paul. So I think for Paul, once again, I'm just going to do two basic ones. They're not going to be used. That's fine. Because for James, we're going to do one move. And then I think we're going to do this one. Because this one, we can use it to be able to get one of the books of the New Testaments. We'll add the Timothy 1, Timothy 2, and Titus to the New Testament canon. We'll place the faith cards face down and then flip them up. And I think the two that we are going to use is James. So right now, Paul hasn't been that useful, but that's okay. That'll change. Of course, before we use our faith cards, we have to roll the messenger die. Oh, we rolled a two, of course. Whenever you roll a two, you need to pick it up and then roll it a second time. And we rolled a four. A two states that the message was intercepted, no talking or sharing, etc., etc. But then when we rolled a four, we have to place a mission stop in the elder's church. James is our elder apostle, so we have to place it here. What this means is we can do normal fellowship moves. So we can move church members between uh, churches that are already there, but we cannot from Caesarea go and generate a new church in Antioch because we have a missionary stop. So we have to get rid of this before we can generate a new church from this location. Fortunately for us, Paul did play his basic card, which gives us a minus one missionary stop. Now, this is in the region of wherever the elder apostle is. So that's James for this round. So we can remove that missionary stop, which is great. Then instead of using James move card, we're going to use James add one Timothy, and we're going to place this as one of our books. What we can do is just simply place the card underneath this spot to show that we have the Timothy book. But now this card is out of James's deck. So James' deck is now one card less. It's only seven cards big. <laughs> so we're going to need to replace that with something. We'll also remove this missionary stop, thanks to Paul. Now after finishing the share phase, we still get to move to the move phase and gain two general movement. And what we're going to do is move this church member over here to Crete. So that way, Paul can still grow the church. But that took two movements, one to move to the boat and two to move into Crete. Finally, we can move to the growth phase and we will grow Crete and Jericho. But that's it. Now that we have done the live action twice, we move to the mature phase. And this is the fun part. We get to buy new faith cards. How we do this is we look at the upper left-hand side of our faith cards, and there's a faith value. That is the amount of points we have to spend to gain faith cards. So both James and Paul have a total of three on each of them. Since James is first, he gets to choose if he wants to buy three one faith cards because he has three faith. He can buy a two faither and a one faith card, or he can buy one three faith card. 
Since James got rid of his other two faith card, I think what he's going to do is buy one two faith card and one one faith card. If ever you buy more than one card, you just draw the top card of the pile and then put it in your discard pile. Paul, on the other hand, is going to use all three of his faith and buy one three faith card. But by doing that, he gets to draw two three faith cards and pick one and put the other on the bottom of the deck. Uh, and then his one that he purchased can go into his discard pile. James, for his one faith card, will gain authentic fellowship. This will just simply add one church member to wherever the elder apostle is on the board. And then his two value faith card will be an additional move and the Peter uh, New Testament canon. Both of these cards will go to his discard pile. Paul can either choose... Household saved, when that adds two church members to wherever the elder apostle is, or send missionaries, and he can get rid of two missionary stops within that region. Well, he already has lots of cards that have missionary uh, removals, missionary stop removals, so let's do the household saved. This will go to his discard pile, and this goes to the bottom of the faith deck. We have now ended a round of play. Now we move back to the arm phase and we'll draw six cards. So all the cards that we played for that round have gone to our discard pile, plus the ones that we purchased. Each apostle will only have the two cards remaining in their deck, and then they'll have to shuffle their discard pile to see what the remaining cards are. I have already shuffled up both of them, so we've got another James, another James, and one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, and one more six. And then for Paul, we have one, two, three, four, five. Yes, household saved. We kind of need this. We, we're losing a lot of church members, and it's hard to gain them unless we have something to add them, so this will help us. Paul will now become the elder apostle. Let's see what trial we have to face. We'll draw our trial card, and it is holier than you. If you ever want to know the thematic reasoning for one of these cards, they give you the Bible verse that you can look at, and there's also an extra booklet in the actual game itself that tells you a little bit about the reasons why this effect is taking place due to what's happening in the Bible at this spot. So here what we have to do is place two missionary stops in the location where Paul is at. I'm not going to say this is good because it's not good, but the thing is we do have Paul and Paul's good at getting rid of those. So as long as we aren't losing too many church members, I'm okay. Now we move to the praying phase. I think it makes perfect sense. James will play two movement cards and Paul will play two missionary stop um, cards. Then we can roll our missionary die and we rolled an eight. Four to an eight, nothing happens, so we don't have to worry. So then what I think I'm going to do is play both of Paul's to get rid of both of those missionary stops. We'll get rid of both of these missionary stops, and that way Paul can do a mission move if he wants. We have a total of two moves now that we can make. I think one is we're going to take three of these. And remember, you have to have either a missionary or an apostle to do a missionary mission move. And we're going to do a mission move over here to Damascus. We want to keep growing churches, so the other thing we're going to do is move Jericho, one from Jericho over here as a fellowship move to um, Jerusalem. That way, Jerusalem and Damascus will grow, as well as Crete, where Paul is. We're still going to want to grow all of the churches that we can, so Jericho won't grow because it's less than three population, but all of these will grow. Oh yeah, and Caesarea won't either, because it's only James. He's doing the best he can. <laughs> We've ended the first live phase. Now we're going to move this over to James. So whatever happens, it's going to happen in James' location. We'll draw a new trial card. We have tarnished outreach. That's simply going to add one missionary stop to James' location. <laughs> he can't even do a missionary move yet anyways because he doesn't have a large enough population. We'll place the missionary stop right here. Praying this time, I think we're going to have Paul play this card and he's going to pray our household saved because that could allow James to have a few more church members and he might even be able to grow or do a mission move. James is still going to play two of his basic cards. Let's give the messenger die a roll. We rolled a six. six. Four through eight, we're good. Nothing happens. So last round, we hardly ever picked Paul's cards. And this round, I think we only picked Paul cards. So, hey, you know, it works out. We're going to do the mission move, and that's in the region of where James is at. And then since James is the elder uh, apostle, we'll place two church members in the place that he's at. Let's remove that missionary stop and place two new church members there. Much better. 
For our two moves, I think what we're going to do is have Damascus over here do a move action to Nazareth. Whoops. <laughs> right here. And then we will have Jerusalem. We're going to send this missionary over here along with one additional church member for the second move action. Now we'll move to the mature phase and we can buy some more faith cards. James is going to buy one three faith card. And I think Paul is going to go ahead and grab a two point card and a one point card. Paul will grab one two faith. So this is John's for the New Testament and he can just add more church members. Also awesome. And a one faith. We have angelic escape. Ooh, we can escape from jail. So far, no one's gone to jail, but that can change. For James, he gets to draw two and pick one. We have household saved. We know what that one is. We've seen that before. And we have devoted obedience. Ooh, we could have James be our move guy because that's two movements. I, I think I'm going to take that one. I like this, but we already have one. So yeah, we'll put that at the bottom of the deck. Now let's arm ourselves. So we'll draw six cards. One, two, three, and then I already shuffled the discard pile. Four, five, and six. And then for Paul, one, two, three, and four, five, and six. Wow, if you look at this, Paul has a nice hand. Lots of ways to add church members, got two books in hand. And if you think about it, I'm planning on, if I can, leaving these two in his hand so at the end of the next round, we can get a four faith card. And those are like miracles. Those are usually really good cards. So this will help us to be able to buy some of those. We'll move the elder staff over to Paul and we'll draw our next trial card. <laughs> Perfect timing. He is now imprisoned. When you're imprisoned, you cannot move that apostle from the location that they're at. But their church can still grow because if there's, as long as there's a population of three, there's still other church members out there growing the church. Paul, though, will be stuck in Crete now for three rounds. You can kind of see the three, the two, the one. We'll track it that way. After we get down to a zero, then he will be broken free. Or if he only had that uh, imprisoned card that he just purchased, <laughs> which he doesn't, but if he had that in his hand, he could just get himself out of jail. For our praying phase, I think we're going to have Paul just play one of his cards just in case we may roll and have to place a missionary stop. And we're going to do the household saved because although we're in prison, the missionary in Crete isn't and they can continue moving. Then we'll have James simply do one of his and let's do just another one of his basic ones. Now you can kind of see when I'm playing this solo, I can optimize the cards that I'm playing. But what if James played his best cards at the same time that Paul played his best cards and you can only pick two of them? So you can see when you're playing cooperatively, it can be a little bit more difficult, especially when you can't talk during the prey phase. And we rolled a three. So a three would normally mean we can't, uh, we can't talk, but that's okay. Since we're playing solo, that really doesn't have an effect on us. I think the two cards we're going to use this round is one of James' basic cards and then the household saved card. You can always activate the faith cards in any order. So the first thing we're going to do is place two more church members here in Crete. And then with that one additional movement, we're going to do a missionary move because our population is more than four. And we're going to move all of these church members with this missionary to here on the boat. Now we have two more move actions. We'll move all of these here to Cyrene. And you can see on the boats, you don't need to leave anybody in the boats, and that does not snuff out a candle. That's fine. Our second move is going to be doing a mission move here to Antioch. We're going to use James, and we're going to have these two and... Ah, let's just have one. Yeah, there we go. I like leaving at least one or two in each location because, remember, our goal is we have to have a church in every single city. So... We need to have at least one here. If we have two, in case something happens in that region, we can lose one and we don't snuff out a church. We now can grow our churches. We'll grow Antioch and we'll grow Nazareth over here. We also definitely want to grow Crete and Cyrene. Nice. The elder staff will now move over to James and Paul will move from being at three for imprisoned down to two. So just two more rounds as he in prison. And we'll draw our next trial card. Oh, we have a mission team split. This means we have to lose half of the population in the city with James. 
and then we have to place a missionary stop in that city. Whenever you see half, it is always rounded down. But right now we have an even number. One, two, three, four. So we're going to lose both of these church members and then place a missionary stop here, which is bad. But now, since that population is so small, we can't even do a mission move from there. Moving into the praying phase, I had a plan before, but I think I'm going to drop it. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have Paul play one of his cards and this card here that can add one to any one church. Okay, so one church member, because then we're going to have James do one move and then one to the current church, and that's where James is at. We then have to roll the messenger die. Okay, we rolled a five, so nothing happens. It's between basically three and eight for solo. Nothing happens. We're going to play the authentic fellowship from James and this one here from Paul, so we can place two church members. We'll place both of them right here. And although we have a mission stop here, we at least next time can get rid of that and then start going and moving along over on this side of the board. And now this church is large enough that it will continue to grow. We now get to do two movements. Our first one is we're going to have this missionary move here because in Nazareth we had a population of four. We still have a population of three here, so that will continue to grow, which is good. Our second movement, we're going to do a mission move over here, and we're going to move right to here. And now we are still going to be able to grow on the boat, which is cool because we have three population, but we don't have to leave them here next time. We can move all of them out into Syracuse. Now let's grow our churches. So we're definitely going to grow this church. And although Paul is in prison, he's going to continue to preach, and it's going to allow us to grow the church there. We will also grow this church here and this church here. Now, why I'm growing this church is because I eventually want this one to move down here to Gaza and then Alexandria over here. After we finish growing, we now move to the mature phase. And this is James' hand. He has a total of four faith, so he's going to buy one four faith card. That is awesome. And Paul here has a total of three, so we're going to buy one three faith card. James will grab two of these and pick one to keep. So mentor new leaders, we could place two new uh, missionaries, which would actually be really cool. Or we have crowd accepts faith. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five church members in one region. We're definitely taking this one. So we'll place this one on the bottom of the board uh, of the of the deck here. You can see that is definitely a four faith card. Now for Paul, he can either choose household saved. Well, there's a lot of household saves in this thing. Or we have devoted obedience. Hmm. You know, we've got a lot of ways to make church members now. I think movement's going to be key. So let's put this devoted obedience into his deck. Let's arm ourselves for the next round, and then I think we'll call it for this video. So we're going to go one, two, three, four. And I shuffled their discard pile. And we have five and six compared to Paul's one, two, three. Three. Oh, there's his uh, way to break him free of jail. <laughs> Four, five, and then here's his discard pile. Six. And we also will move imprisoned to only being active for one more round. And Paul will become the elder apostle. Here's the zoomed out view of the board, just so you guys can see where we have gone so far. And we have a lot of places left to go on the board because if you look, it goes all the way down to here. So we have a lot to do. We only have, I think, about 15 more trial cards. So yeah, we're going to have to get our butts moving. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you at the next stop.